You know, I uh, in your, one of your notes from the middle of last week, you were talking about markets looking at, what is it, hope, fear, and uncertainty. I hope I got the order right. And two of your main fo focuses, foci, are uh, obviously war in Ukraine, but then what China has done with, with the crackdown on track, how it seems, uh, on tech, I should say, and how it seems to have started lightening it a bit. So let's start on war in Ukraine. Where are we? Hope, fear, uncertainty, and what does it mean for traders? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to be playing this by the week. And, and this week, we are on hope. And, and the hope is really deriving from the, the talks that Turkey claims is going really well. Um, and, and so I think hope is where it is. But um, I think that the truth is a bit more complex because, unfortunately, we have major devastation going on the ground. Uh, and that means that in the back uh, or in the back uh, background, you've got uncertainty that remains elevated, despite the hope that's uh, occupying foreground uh, for equity markets and, and perhaps even some of the currency markets. So, in terms of the crackdown on tech, the steps, the announcements that the government made last week provoked that big move up in tech stocks. It really helped move the Nasdaq higher in the U.S. on Friday. But you are also pointing out how much China fears have a way of pervading emerging market Asia. So again, hope, fear, uncertainty. And in particular, what does it mean for those kinds of stocks? Well, I think for, for markets, it's, it's hopes, 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 because uh, they, they hear this uh, blanket campaign style statement from Liu He, and they think that this is going to really uh, drive markets a lot higher. Uh, for me, it's it's still a lot more uncertainty, primarily because we don't know exactly uh, what will be lifted in, in, in terms of the regulations. Uh, we, we do still have the anti-monopolistic uh, stance. Uh, we have the anti-money laundering stance that was taken earlier. Uh, so maybe is it just a case of uh, uh, keeping quiet on, on, on all these fronts for the time being, or is it really something that's going to be a durable boost for markets. I, th I think these are the inconvenient questions not answered in, in the uh, euphoria of the blanket uh, campaign remarks. Do you find some of those uh, commodity hedges and supply chain hedges within China, though, given, as you point out, there's a lot more vertical integration domestically? Yeah, I, I think that's, that's both. It's a double-edged sword here. So uh, on one hand, it means that uh, there could be a lot more pressures that's uh, perhaps uh, rippling through the financial markets in terms of the hedging, like you rightly point out. Uh, but on the other hand, what it also means is that uh, the supply disruptions uh, and, and really the, the demand disruption as a consequence of that uh, and the ability to contain inflation, all the, on, on these aspects, China tends to fare better. Uh, so the upshot here is uh, for Beijing, uh, the trade-off between policy is not so sharp. They can focus quite unequivocally on just boosting the economy. However, uh, I, I think uh, the, the way they go about boosting an economy that's been set on the back foot uh, by property and tech uh, needs to be a lot more emphatic uh, than I think is it's, it's currently being signaled. Vish, talk to me about the winners and losers out of the, the energy and commodity story here in Asia from an FX point of view. We've seen the Aussie dollar is now the best performer in G10 against the greenback. Is that going to be sustainable? Well, I, I think that really depends on the view of uh, risks being ring-fenced. Ring so I think what we have going on now is hopes that uh, the talks will come to some kind of a positive resolution on, on Russia-Ukraine. but. For the time being, the sanctions will remain in place. The restrictions uh, by countries buying from Russia remains in place. So that, I think, is the so-called Goldilocks land for uh, commodity currencies such as the Aussie to outperform. Uh, and, and, and the Aussie, particularly in the last five to 10 years, has really aligned itself with the uh, you know, ga gas markets uh, and, and so on and so forth, which means that kind of um, sensitivities will be even higher. But the moment we veer into uncertainty either way, uh, I think the Aussie starts to unravel. Uh, the silver lining is that the Aussie is now a proper low-yielding currency, so we don't have to worry as much about carry trades unwinding. But the, the commodity uh, back and forth really depends whether we can keep it within this Goldilocks band uh, of hopes on the talks, but still uh, supply being hampered, thus giving a terms of trade boost for, for the Aussie dollar.